The common questions, what is it, what caused it, will I be cured? The only certain thing you can say about it is that it is uncertain. People have a great fear that they're going to bleed. It is quite a rare uh, condition that folk really don't know that much about. ITP is a rare autoimmune bleeding disorder. The most common symptom is bruising, which can be very severe, multicolour bruising, which covers large parts of the body. Nosebleeds are common, mouth blisters, and rarely gastrointestinal bleeding, very heavy periods. Um, brain hemorrhage is the rarest but most severe, obviously, and fatigue is quite common, although not recognised. Well, I reported to my GP mainly because I'd been feeling very run down and tired, fatigued for quite a long period of time, for probably three or four months. I had also been getting bruises on my arms, legs and torso, which were completely random. Well, the symptoms vary very much from one patient to another, and the severity of those symptoms also varies. Um, the bruising causes difficulties with people being seen with their bruises, certainly with children in schools. Parents worry very much and sometimes are aware that other parents are talking about them and they're being accused of abuse. As soon as she saw the bruises, she immediately gave me an emergency blood test and said it could be something quite serious. She did mention leukaemia at the time but didn't want to worry me too much I guess. The biggest concerns are obviously will I bleed to death? Um, they worry about how they'll manage the symptoms and fold them into their daily lives, um, when to go to the doctor when something is abnormal and they actually need to seek help. After four hours of tests, various blood tests um, and analysis, uh, ITP was diagnosed. Everyone's frightened of having a brain hemorrhage, that's the worst sort of bleeding. And then there's the hidden symptom of fatigue, which a lot of doctors say doesn't exist. The ITP specialists know it's there because they hear it so often, but in the general hospital, patients are often told it's nothing to do with their ITP. Obviously having to report to hospital once a week, certainly for quite a lot of the uh, early part of my um, ITP experience, took up a lot of time. It took up a lot of my wife's time having to drop me off to hospital, pick me up. It can be difficult with work. Employers are not always sympathetic to having time off to keep going for hospital appointments to have blood tests. Not sympathetic to fatigue, which they can't see and have to believe that the person really feels that. Suddenly when you're diagnosed with ITP, it becomes very important to be cautious about what you're taking, even with simple cold remedies, with painkillers. Um, certainly aspirin or any product containing aspirin is, is an absolute um, product to avoid for ITP sufferers because aspirin of course does have an impact on the platelet count. We had to cancel two holidays at very short notice for example because my platelet levels fell. So I think we as a family and, uh, and certainly I as an individual have learned not to plan too far in advance and don't think take things too much for granted. Uh, I was prescribed steroids immediately. Luckily my platelet count did continue to respond positively, but after that first week I then suddenly realised just what the full extent of steroids and taking them would have on my um, daily life, my family's daily life, uh, and uh, even my own physiology, I could tell that uh, quite a lot of things were starting to happen. You're alive and well at, um, in the middle of the night and early hours of the morning, but then come the afternoon, of course, the system is beginning to feel uh, a little bit run down and tired from it. Another thing that um, became very apparent is that I would be eating a lot more. 
steroids have this um, impact, I'm afraid that um, it, physically you just want to eat and eat a lot. And I gained 12 kilos in the first two years of my steroid encounter. Uh, unfortunately, I've had steroids prescribed four times. Everybody will respond differently to the various treatments that are offered. But in my own case, I certainly wish I had had a different treatment much earlier. And I hope that I don't have to revisit steroids at any time. When I founded the group in 1995, it was really just steroids and immunoglobulin were the major treatments. I think for very severe cases there were Im immunosuppressants, but now um, watch and wait is used a lot, particularly in children, because the side effects of the treatments are worse than the illness for some. And of course we have the new drugs, which are a new approach, and that's been a wonderful leap forward. ITP is a more common disease than haemophilia and in a recent survey in, in Europe it was found that most people knew that haemophilia was a bleeding disorder but nobody had heard of ITP. There are a number of things with uh, dentistry that, uh, and, and the um, drugs that dentists might use um, when giving treatment to us all that may clash or harm some of the treatments that we're being given um, to manage our ITP. Without wishing to um, in any way be negative about uh, GPs, dentists, other health professionals, I, in my experience, certainly uh, realise that they don't know very much about ITP. So it's very important that um, folk like dentists, like physiotherapists, like other health workers uh, and carers understand what ITP is. Our organisation has been chipping away at awareness ever since I started it, but this is our first campaign to really throw all we have at it in the month of September, but we hope it'll be an annual event and that ITP awareness will, will spread.